Hello everybody. I'm going to try to change a nozzle here on my Prusa i3 Mark III S. I have it preheating at the PETG setting. That's the film that was last used on it. I've, I've uh, unloaded it. I have a cardboard sheet on here. This is nice because I can keep the bed uh, warm for my next print, but also not burn my hand while I'm working on it. So cutting out a nice custom piece of cardboard is very helpful uh, for nozzle swaps and for printer maintenance in general. Also keeps the gunk off the printer bed, which is nice. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start by, um, I've already also lifted the printer head, uh, the extruder head up to about 110 millimeters off the bed. I'm gonna start by removing the cooling fan with a Torx T10 driver. You can use a 2.5 hex, but the T10 driver is immensely more quick um, to work with in this case, so. Remove the center screw, and then we're going to remove the side screw here. The fan should come off after that. Beware there's a nut here in back that likes to fly off. It's another reason why I like the cardboard. It actually helps to absorb the bounce of nuts when you remove things. So off that comes. We're going to secure the cooling fan, the part cooling fan right here between the X belt. And now we're going to remove this little fan shroud, the part fan shroud, so um, part cooling fan shroud. So we're going to go ahead and unscrew this lower front um, screw from the hot end fan. And you don't have to completely remove the screw, you just have to remove enough so this thing comes out. Beware there's a square nut inside this little uh, cooling thing that come, like, loves to jump out and drop on your floor and not be found for months. So be very careful removing that. Now that that's out, um, we have the exposed hot end. This is actually a great time to clean up your brush. And because I have cardboard on it, I don't really care if I get little black bits on the bed because they'll just hit the cardboard instead. So I'm gonna brush that out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this uh, channel lock plier. You can, some people use a, an adjustable wrench, um, but I'm gonna secure this like that. Um, I'm also going to use this little socket wrench. This is a quarter inch drive, quarter inch drive socket wrench with a seven millimeter metric socket attached to it. We're going to set it so that um, it will engage on loosening or counterclockwise motion, as you can see here. Ratchets when you go clockwise and it engages when you go counterclockwise. When we're turning it here, it's going to look like we're going clockwise because the handle is facing upside down. We're gonna go ahead and engage the heat block just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and again, we're gonna turn the, um, turn things opposite, so clockwise here. And there we go, okay? Make sure you secure that heat block with that channel lock plier. And now that it's out, you don't need this actually anymore past this first turn. Oh, I just seem to have made a nut fly, that's great. So we'll figure out what that is later. Um, here we go. Let's get this out. Um, be cautious because it is quite hot. One of the reasons why I like the channel lock plier better than the adjustable wrench is once I have this hot end out, I can adjust it a little bit and carefully remove that nozzle from the socket. You do not want to touch it because it is Last I checked, around 230 Celsius, and it does take a minute or two to come down from that. So, very gently take it and remove it. Sometimes if you have filament on your socket, it will glue the socket to the nozzle or vice versa. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and stop for a second figure out what it was that flew off. Okay, we found the culprit. This is a little pesky nut that goes... On the back side of the cooling fan, we'll leave that right there. Um, we're going to go ahead and place the new, well, the nozzle X back in. It's kind of a darkened color because it's a hardened steel nozzle with a coating on it. So you've got about five or ten seconds to place it. Um, you're going to want to go what appears to be um, loose because you're going upside down. Um, right up into the hot end like that. You've got it again about five maybe 10 seconds before this will heat up enough to burn your hand. That's enough for me to get it, you know, 
finger, almost finger tight. Now we're gonna go ahead and reverse our socket wrench so that it now engages when going clockwise and snaps when we go counterclockwise. When we turn it upside down, it's gonna look like we're going loose because we're pointing upside down. So again, we're gonna go, it's gonna appear to go counterclockwise, but relative to the nozzle, it's tightening it. There we go, I can just feel finger pressure. At this point, I'm gonna bring back my um, channel lock plier to secure the heater block. And we're gonna apply about one finger worth of pressure. Okay, that's it, you don't need much. Just one finger of pressure. Hold it for a few seconds, straighten out your heat block. Uh, if you wanna clean anything again, this is a good time. Nothing's in the way, your bed's covered. You can get a nice good scrub in there. And now let's start to reassemble things. Uh, make sure that square nut is inside there, otherwise you won't be able to tighten it. We're gonna go ahead and take our Torx T10 driver and tighten this again. Once again, your 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench would work, but this is just a much faster way to go. So precision Torx screwdriver with a T10 head is a lifesaver working on 3D printers. Um, just makes everything just go quicker and easier. We're gonna put this cooling fan back in. Really important here between the two screws, always pick the shorter one to go in the middle. The longer one goes on the side, so. Oh, and that pops out. Pop it back in. Okay, if the tightening nut inside this little plastic thing comes loose, grab an Allen wrench, and then you're gonna wanna stick it in there to kind of counter hold it so that it can get some tension. But here we're okay. This little nut here loves to fly out. So hold one finger here while you tighten with the other. Move my hand a little bit so you can see a little better. There we go. Okay, this isn't going in straight, which means I'm not quite in yet. There we go. And we're tightened up and we're we're mechanically done at this point. I'm gonna remove these tools from the cardboard bed. We can actually take off the cardboard at this point and go down to your settings here and tap on it. We're gonna go here, change the sheet if you need to, but we're gonna go down to the settings we're gonna go down to uh, hardware setup, HW setup, right there. You're gonna go ahead and pick, change your nozzle size. Uh, I went up to 0.6, go back up, go back up, make sure you have the correct sheet size. At this point, if you're a real stickler, you'll wanna go to calibration and do your first layer calibration. I've been doing this enough, um, and my printers are dialed in enough that I don't always have to do that, uh, so. Um, but if you want to do it by the book, uh, this is the time to do your first layer calibration, load your film and all that good stuff. Uh, well, I hope that helps. Uh, this does get easier with practice. Again, the key things are to make sure that you um, keep the cardboard on top, have your tools in place, secure that heat block so you don't twist it um, using either the channel lock pliers or channel lock pliers or an adjustable wrench. And make sure you have a T10 driver to make your life easier and a ratcheting 7mm driver. Happy hunting.